20 time-saving fusion tips in under 3 minutes. Let's get started with some organization ones. First up, easily rename nodes by pressing F2 on your keyboard. You can even select multiple nodes and name them one after another. If you go to Fusion, Fusion Settings, and then Flow, you can change the node alignment to Grid. That way everything's lined up and really organized. In that same menu, you can enable four source tile pictures, which allows you to see where your media is coming from at a glance. If you hold down Alt while connecting two nodes together, it's going to reveal a drop-down menu that has all of the nodes' inputs. If you shift-click and drag a node, you can attach it over an existing node pipe, and doing the same thing in reverse will allow you to disconnect it without breaking the flow. And I have to throw it in here, Shift Space, a super powerful tool that allows you to add in any node just by hitting the Enter key. Huge time saver. And after the video, let me know down in the comments which tip is most useful for you. And speaking of useful, if you're on the edit page trying to access a fusion clip that is below a different clip, simply right click on it and hit open in fusion page. And back inside the fusion page, smooth keyframes can be really hard to do sometimes. So here's a few tips to help with that. When you have some keyframes selected in the spline editor, press F to flatten the keyframes, S to smooth the keyframes, and T to open up the easing menu so you can fine tune the strength. You can also access these tools using the icons at the bottom, as well as the looping controls which you can use to make your animations loop indefinitely. If you're working on an intense project, right click on the playback bar and hit auto proxy. This will lower the resolution of the preview window when you're making changes, that way everything updates in real time. The other option is to turn off motion blur, which is going to turn it off in the fusion page, but when you switch back to the edit page to render your clip, it's still going to be turned on. That means you don't have to remember to go through each node and turn it back on when you're done with your project. Let's say you want to combine two values. Well, you can actually do math inside of each of the control boxes inside of the inspector without even having to use an expression. But speaking of expressions, you can easily use them to link two controls together by right-clicking, hitting Expression, and then using the Pick Whip tool to select a different control. And just like that, they're linked. Another tip is you can pin nodes in the inspector. This allows you to see all the controls from multiple nodes at once. And you can use that Pick Whip tool from the last tip to connect multiple nodes together. And if you want to have two nodes with all the controls linked, you can copy the original node and paste it instance to a Control Shift V or Command Shift V if you're on Mac. Now the nodes are linked. Let's say you want to make a slight variation to the second copy. You can right click on any of the controls and select D instance. It's going to remove the green outline from around the box, meaning it is now independent from the original copy. If you go to Workspace, Layout Presets, Fusion Presets, there's three different Fusion layouts to choose from. Mid-flow and left-flow are great if you have an ultra-wide monitor. To see the effect a node is having on your composition, you can use Split Viewing. Toggle it on using the button in the top left of the viewer, and then drag two opposite nodes to the different sides of the dividing line. Now you can drag that line back and forth to see the effect it has on different portions of the image. And as a final bonus tip for you, check out my Editor Collection Pack which is a resource every video editor needs, and actually what I use to make most of the animations throughout this video. Plus, there is a free version to try out as well. Click here to learn more about how much time it's actually able to save you.